ODI how to, and we are out of the unclicked studio and we're outside. I'm gonna show you how to do hangover toothpick grinds, hanger grinds, hangers, whatever you wanna call them. I would say most people think hangers are scary. That's why you don't see them as much as other grind tricks. But if you take your time and learn them like this, then they should be work in your favor. The scariest hanger I've ever done was the, the gap to hanger at San Diego. That was the first time I did a big gap to hanger and I didn't even know like how hard the impact was gonna be. So that one, that was like at the end of filming for right here and that one surprised me that I actually landed it. But it was just like an unlock to be like, damn, you can do gap to hangers like this. That school's crazy because I would have never done that gap to hanger, but there's like a nine flat nine or something comparable to the other one, but way smaller. So I gap to hanger that, gap to switch hanger that, and then went up to the, the big dog. Did you do like gap tires? No, that was, uh, that was months before. Oh. Yeah, and then the gap to hanger, I like looked at it. I said I want to, you know, like I want a gap to hanger, but in my head I was like, I'll never gap to hanger that. And like three months later, top three tooth hangers, uh, Josh Harrington for sure. And Brian Kaczynski. Those are my top two of like when I was getting into BMX, like super big fanboy of seeing these guys do hangers down rails and just being like, damn, you can do them like that. And then number three, Lacey has like the best hanger and best over tooth grind. No one does an overtooth like Dan Lacey, and his hangers are easy. Harrington, Kaczynski, Dan Lacey. First steps to learning hangovers, I would find, I would first off, make sure you're really good at double pegs because this isn't something you do before you're, you're really good at grinding rails or ledges. So you gotta be comfy with grinding rails and ledges. Find a nice little flat rail, preferably, or if you only have a ledge, you can do it on a ledge too. And then just start kissing the end of the rail with the front peg, just get that feeling of Make sure you can be really sturdy when you go to that lean forward committed stage of the hanger. So just the last last half of a foot to a foot of a rail, just start messing with it. Start kiss, kissing that front peg and then swinging the back end over. Speed wise, I would just go pretty fast because you know, as long if you're really comfortable with grinding and you got a nice solid bunny hop, I would say speed is your friend with hanger grinds. With a hanger and you're scared, like when I'm gonna start trying to hanger these rails, the first few I'm gonna go faster than normal, and then you slow it down and work on balance and everything. Even for that last bit, like if you're learning? Yeah, yeah, because I'll show you. If you go fast, you barely, as long as you get the peg on, you're very safe. You're just gonna, there's no balance compared to, you can, before you even try and step back, you can take the really fast approach and just slow it down. You see how different that was? It was the same, same amount of rail, but yeah, before you even start pushing it back and trying to get distance on the rail, you can just adjust your speed and feel the balance points. Once you start tapping the end of the rail and get comfortable with that, just start trying to feel the balance point because you're gonna flip over and you're gonna drop early. It, I mean, it's, you just wanna hit the peg and get the feeling of what it feels like to hit just a front peg. Yeah, do some twos. You can just do some twos on the side of the rail, but really the feeling of, because you're jumping in sideways like this. So the hanger is like actually more natural. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see many people do like the crazy Sean Burns too, because they're, they're, they're way harder. And they're sicker too, so maybe we should do a how-to on those next <laughs> with Sean Burns, because <laughs> I'm not that good at them. Do one of those so you can see. But really, I feel like it's more natural just to let it hang. That's why the hanger tooth is one of the funnest grind tricks. Feels better just to hang her on over. First person to ever do a hanger. Who's the first person? Garrett Reynolds. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably way back, like 30 years ago. Do you know? No, no. Really. First person to a hanger. First hanger on a rail may have been either Ralph Sinisi or Ian Monroe. Say the Barbarian. 
Man, I don't know. Yeah, I could see that. Do you wax the rail? You want to just find a nice... You don't want it super slippery, but you don't want it sticky. That's a huge thing. Don't just hang or something before you've grinded it a bunch of times. You know, that's like what you're saying with balancing and everything. You've got to double peg it and do some other grind tricks on it just so you know like where the friction's at and you're comfortable with it because definitely been a dummy and jumped on some, just tried to hang a rail without grinding it and flipped right over the bars. One of the worst case scenarios with a hanger, just right here, just so you don't get hurt, is just always be careful of tapping on the way up. So you do want to be a little bit over, but it's just, you won't, you shouldn't be doing hangers unless you're really comfortable with grinding rails anyways. So you'll probably already know, like you'll know that feeling of clipping on the way up. So you're, you're going to avoid that. And that's why I think a lot of people are scared of hangers because you're putting all your trust on this front peg, just diving into it. They're a very simple, easy trick, but that's you got to be careful. Once you want to go past that, that last little, or that, that beginning, like bit. just hitting the chink, yeah. I would just, just find. So if you're starting right here, getting that last like two feet just step back and try and like if it's a, it's a flat rail like this at a skate park or in the streets or something just look for an upright like if you can do that you know try and be like all right now my new goal is to pretend that's the rail just this half part and then you're just gonna start working on balance from there it's just like a nose manual you know just like an ice picks like a manual it's just like a, a different balance point like i remember when i was first doing them it, like if you weren't really sturdy you don't want that peg to give away. Like real, right now, after doing them for however many years, I don't think about that. But in the beginning, I do remember like hitting that front peg with all the weight on it. It's like, if you, you have to be pretty braced and you make sure you're stable on the front end, the better. Cause you don't want that peg moving around at all. It'll throw off your balance or flip you over the bars. You just, just like a double peg, like say this line's the rail, you get on and you stay on where you got on. You don't want to like try and readjust with that front wheel at all. Hold it, hold it steady. Did you get comfortable on the end? Then you just pull it back a little bit. Go fast at first, you know? What I would do is like, I'm gonna aim for the second upright. You always have a little goal and you just keep pushing it back further and further. You could just slow it way down so you can see the difference and... And then once you, if you can go as slow as you can go from the second one, you could probably do the whole thing. Prove it. Okay. Like I, would, <laughs> like I said, if I was learning this, I would go really fast just to make sure I get most of the rail at least. Woo! And that's a good thing about doing it on a small rail right there because I dropped it way early. Like I was probably dropping it right here, but since it wasn't a huge rail, you can get out of it with a low rail and some speed. And that's like why I would go fast when I'm learning because you can eat shit harder, but your chances of eating shit are a lot less. And I actually did it that time. <laughs> You have a huge balance point too. That's what's like, you can go further and easier than nose manuals. Cause on a nose manual, you're going to drop right here. But on a hanger, you have all this extra room. It's hard to flip over on a hanger. It is, it is. You have to get super steep and you can, but usually by that time you're at the end of the rail. Like of all my hangers I've done my whole life, I've, you, I barely flipped over. Yeah, I feel like it's like only a few people, like I feel like Nair would like freak Nair, over. Nair, Corali would get super steep on yeah. real rails. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, the times I flipped over on long rails, it's usually at the end and I can get out of it. Yeah. What's well, like worst case scenario, I guess, like for a kid I, learning right now? Worst case scenario, when you're learning, I think like it's getting your foot, getting your foot you go really off. fast, caught in the upright, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Or flipping over onto the rail. But that's a cool thing about, even on this rail, when you flip over, you have, you're gonna, you know, you got, you could get messed up, but it's not a giant rail. Like when you're in the streets, there's not gonna be anything to touch and ugh. Yeah. So that's why you gotta find a nice little rail where you can drop your wheel and be okay and flip over and it's not gonna smack you in the chest or anything. So that one I was dropping pretty much the whole time. I just kind of stayed tucked and kept the wheel away from the uprights. Another way to get out. I don't really know what I'm doing, but. And you get lucky and make it. I was actually locked in so much more than the other ones. There you go. Once you get the whole rail, you can just play with it like that. And that's a cool thing about hangers on little rails is you saw I messed up like four times until I started figuring out that balance point. We can talk a little bit about kind of why switch is safer. Switch hangers are actually safer when you're going slow and like learning the balance because like I said, you have that drop and if you, especially if you know how to crank arm because you can kind of just grab that pedal and not catch anything. Your foot's safe. The regular hanger, your back foot, boom. You can break some toes if you're going fast enough. 
See that? Yeah. Advantage goofy footed riders. Adva for sure. It's a, it's a way funner trick this way. We got a flip on camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we needed that. <laughs> so you can flip just like a nose manual. It's probably actually easier to get out of than a nose manual if you're past the rail. I swear I can do these. All right, so there's the steps on kind of like learning how to balance it and getting comfortable with it on small rails. Let's pretend, because this rail is big enough and long enough to where if you go from it up here, you kind of want to get the whole thing. Like when you flip over, you're going to be going fast. And if you drop it, unless you're doing the switch hanger to pedal, you could catch an upright. So I'm going to kind of just show you the approach to when you get comfortable enough to step to like a real rail out on the streets, even though this is a rail in my backyard. But this is kind of what I do. Double peg, but I put the front wheel down. I feel like that's a good warm up for just mm -hmm. learning them too. You know, totally, like yeah. For... It is because even on a big rail, I'll do this, like going downstairs, just to get a little feel of the balance. And at that point, it's like, all right, now all I gotta do is kick my, kick that back wheel over, going fast. You barely even balance it. You guys good? You guys good? You guys good? All right, I'm fucking trying it. I'm all right, all right, I got it, I got it. El Toro. Next try, next try, yeah. fuck it. Mockumentary. That's Tony Nyer on Walnut right there. All right, Jesus. Big dog shit. All right, let's keep the back end down. Make it. Boom. Then you did it. You did a real rail. <laughs> no, I want to clean it up though. I want to clean it up. <laughs> you. There's the steps. Mark the tape. Mark the tape. You're like, yeah, I got a clip. And then I guess I'll do a switch one too. Feeler. Ooh. And then thank God for that pedal. Ah. That's good to show though what I meant. Like when you're going fast and you drop, like it's way less of a crank arm and it's almost just this like little safety thing you got. All right, a little steeper. <laughs> Hangers. <laughs> next how to, fake you all rides. All right, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, let us know what the next how to you guys want to see is. <laughs> Thanks again to ODI Grips, best grips in the game, and we're gonna be doing more of these how-tos. Thank you, ODI. Try a pair, put them straight on, wash them with a little dish soap, stretch them out a little bit, and you don't need that break-in session. These things are the shit. This right here is my Pro Model Haro Complete. Most completes you buy. You're gonna have to upgrade over and over again to get them like what we actually ride out there. But this is this bike is good to go. You don't have to change any parts and it's gonna last you forever. Haro SD V3 frame and fork. ODI grips, Odyssey parts. It's legitimately as good as it gets. Everyone has that friend that deserves a better bike. Give your friends some love and try and win them this bike if you think they deserve it by posting a photo or video of them and then in the caption, tell us why they deserve the bike. To make sure we see your entry, just do a hashtag Haro Dennis Complete and we will pick a winner in next month's podcast. And we'll also, whoever wins it for their friend, we're gonna send them a nice ODI package as well for doing cool things for their friends. Official rules too, if I'm really bad at explaining things, will be in the description bio comments Caption. like subscribe outer space outer space <laughs> hit the subscribe button for rbmx and you'll get the description you might win the bike <laughs> win this thing it's no joke whoever wins is going to be hyped